scientists look at a lot of the changes in the Hudson from day to day, from season to season, from year to year. But you may have heard a lot about climate change, big changes over long periods of time. And to tell us a little bit about climate change here in the Hudson Valley, we've got Brittany in a barrel. That's right, Chris. I, I'm in a barrel because today we're here to talk about climate change. On a normal day here in the Hudson River, our normal high tide would come up just a little bit before the end of this bucket. Now, the problem is in 2020, I'm going to be all the way up to here where our first red line is, which means we're going to be adding a lot of water. Now, in 2050, it could be as much as 29 inches, which is right here where my red line is. In 2080, uh-oh, in 2080, as you can see, I'm already overflowing. It's 2080, it might be as high as 55 inches, which is right here at my chin. Now, you might be asking yourself, this is a lot of water. So you might be asking yourself, what else will be affected in the river? If you give me one second, we will get to. <laughs> Perfect. So one thing that will definitely be affected is food webs, okay? Our food webs are gonna be changing constantly. It will favor southern species such as blue crab, while northern species such as tomcod will be affected as well. Our marshes will flood up. Our water may be up to our buildings, which is gonna cause a lot of flooding. We might have to rethink how we get our drinking water. If you like sledding, it's gonna be really hard without snow. Ticks and malaria are gonna be increasing. Now, and how we get our food and our, our farmers are gonna be desperately affected by this as well. So you might be asking yourself, how can I help? What can I do to help? Well, one of the things you can do to help is get a reusable water container instead of drinking out of a different water bottle every day. There's another thing you can do is spend one less minute in the shower. That saves a lot of water. Number three is you can turn off your lights, your games, and your computers when you leave the room and you're not using them anymore. And number four is recycle. It's always important to recycle because burning a lot of new fossil fuels to make new things is very hard. And one of the most important things you can do is volunteer in your community, which we'll talk about later in, an, later in the segment. Brittany, that's fantastic. And in fact, we're gonna be taking a look at some great volunteers on the Hudson River a little bit later. Yeah. You did a good job, Thanks. stay dry, okay.